Hi everyone, it's Kat. I wanted to jump on here because I probably like many of you have been really hit hard by um, everything that's been going on in Israel and the Middle East over these past few days. Um, and it's feeling very reminiscent, I think, of how um, I was feeling you know, when the, the conflict in Ukraine started and really have continued to feel, you know, as we hear more about the conflict in Ukraine, um, a lot of the, the uh, natural disasters that have happened worldwide in, you know, Hawaii, the fires, um, fires that were happening in Europe over the summer, the horrible earthquakes in Turkey, Morocco, um, the terrible flooding in Africa, you know, it really just feels like over the past few years, even going back so far as January 6th in the United States, that there's just been, you know, so many both natural disasters and man-made disasters. And while, you know, we unfortunately know that the history of conflicts goes back much farther, um, it just does feel like maybe because of the modern day media, we're just seeing so much more. And maybe that's part of it. We're not just hearing about things that are happening in far off places, but we're really seeing uh, a lot of the images. And I don't know about you, but it has felt too like uh, the media is not sanitizing the, the reporting and the images as much as they did in the past. And that doesn't necessarily feel new uh, to me and probably people that have spent time in some other countries. I know having spent time in parts of Africa and parts of South and Central America, um, they tend to be more free with the imagery that they show in the media. And so that doesn't feel entirely new, but I feel like at least being in more of the Western world, we're not so used to seeing such graphic imagery. And coming from a background as both a trauma therapist and also having experienced um, just my, some of my own personal traumatic experiences and also um, experiencing what we call secondary or vicarious trauma, which can happen when you're exposed to the traumatic material um, of others, either through people telling you stories or, you know, often working as a therapist, you're really helping people process um, some traumatic experiences and memories. And sometimes you can start to actually pick up symptoms um, of the people that you're working with or even experience feelings, emotions, and even some mental disturbance, nightmares, things like that because of exposure to to material, even if you're not it's you're not personally relating to it or you were not personally in danger or in or feeling a sense of fear. And some of that is because, you know, we're social creatures. We're people that live in community. And the vast majority of us have empathy for others. And so, especially if you're somebody who's very empathic, you know, seeing horrible images, hearing stories of, you know, death and destruction, whether it's again, man-made or, you know, natural disasters can be really disturbing, especially if you're seeing things repetitively, um, you know, and just really feeling the weight of that. And I know for myself, I have definitely been having that experience the last few days. And part of the ways that I've been dealing with that is really minimizing um, my consumption of media or sticking to articles that I can read um, versus listening or watching because then I can control a little bit more of what I'm being exposed to. And if it gets too much, it's a little easier to put down an article than it is to, you know, turn off the, the radio or switch off the TV because stuff comes so quickly that sometimes you may see or hear stuff that you're not prepared for um, before you have the chance to, to put it down or turn it off. Um, so that is my recommendation for people that are really, really feeling the impact of this emotionally, spiritually, energetically, is to reduce or eliminate your consumption of, of media right now. Um, not, not so that you're turning a blind eye, but so that you're trying to maintain um, your well-being in the midst of this situation. Um, but at the same time, there are other things that you can do. You know, you can uh, do such things such as the loving kindness meditation or saying prayers where you're, you know, 
praying or sending blessings to the people in these horrible situations. Obviously, there's always the option to donate money and resources if that's, you know, within your ability. Um, and then the other piece that I think is really important is figuring out what we can do to take care of ourselves so that we can then be available to help others, you know, when when the opportunities arise. Um, and it may also help you feel a little bit less self, um, less uh, hopeless or helpless in the situation if you're preventing yourself from really descending into a place of despair and keeping your spirits lifted so that if there are opportunities either in your community to help people, um, whether they're refugees or, you know, family or friends that maybe have loved ones that are, you know, being really personally affected by these conflicts, you know, you can show up for them um, in, in a way that's helpful if you're taking, you know, good care of yourself and not letting yourself succumb to the sadness and the despair that is being brought on by these situations. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and share a tool that I've been using for myself and that I've also been teaching to some others around me. Um, and this is nothing new. Uh, I've learned this from several teachers. Um, and it's one of those tried and true uh, meditations and mantras that I come back to because it's quick, it's easy, um, and it incorporates a few different practices that can be really helpful to calming the nervous system. And so the way that this one works is we're going to be saying a mantra, um, and it's peace begins with me. And while we're saying the mantra, we're going to be tapping your four fingers of both hands with your thumb. So the nice part of this is you're getting in some tapping, which can be really helpful in terms of, um, you know, activating acupressure points. And also you're going to be doing some, hopefully some deep and gentle breathing while you're doing this and repeating a mantra. And the repetition of the mantra can be, uh, feel really meditative also, especially depending on the speed at which you're doing it. A lot of people like to do this pretty quickly, like peace begins with me, peace begins with me. Um, because sometimes repeating it at a speed like that can feel really meditative. You almost lose track after a while of what you're actually saying and just are kind of in the repetitive, uh, uh, at maybe momentum. I'm not even sure what the right term is, but you're going to kind of get caught up and you lose, you may lose yourself in the words a bit and you just get into this meditative space. Um, when I'm looking to calm myself, repeating it that quickly feels a little frenzied. So I tend to do it a little bit more slowly, but if you're practicing this on your own, just be guided by your, what, whatever feels good to you, what feels right in your body. So to you, the, the quick um, repetition may feel great. So if you end up doing this on your own, feel free. But when I um, show it or when we're practicing together in this video, I'm going to do it a little bit more slowly at a pace that feels good to me, but just Keep in mind that, you know, you can always make this your own and you can switch up the words too. If, if the words peace begins with me don't quite resonate, you can always switch it up to something else that's like a four, four word phrase. Um, but I, you know, personally like this one because it, it gives um, that whole idea of peace begins with me. Again, it feels it feels empowering when you may feel in a situation that's help, help where you feel helpless or hopeless. <laughs> I'm tripping on my words a little bit right now. Um, so let's do this together, and I hope that it's helpful. I'm not going to do it for as long as I would probably recommend. I would say if you're going to do this on your own, maybe do it for one or two minutes. I may keep it a little shorter than that for the sake of time. Um, but feel free if you're doing this on your own, like I said, to do it for a little bit longer if that's what feels good to you. So to start out, go ahead, and if you're seated or even if you're standing, think about really planting your feet on the ground and almost imagine your feet sinking into the floor beneath you, starting to really feel held and anchored to the earth, creating that sense of safety and stability. Start to take some deeper breaths here, really directing your inhale down into your belly. and trying to keep your inhale and your exhale the same length 
or maybe even extending your exhale longer than the inhale, which will help calm the nervous system. And if you feel comfortable, you can think about starting to close your eyes or looking down towards the tip of your nose or down towards your knees. Starting to turn inward and concentrating on how you're feeling in your body today. And then we'll go ahead and begin tapping as we repeat together. Peace begins with me. 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 Now take a deep breath in and a deep breath out as you bring your hands back to your lap. Maybe placing your hands, palms down. And reconnecting with the earth below you as you take a few more deep breaths. Again, drawing your inhale down into your belly and exhaling nice and slow. And when you're ready, if your eyes are closed, begin to flutter them open and start to return to the space around you. I hope you're feeling a little more calm after that practice. We did the mantra and tapping for about 45 seconds. Like I said, um, I would probably try doing it for one to two minutes, um, you know, to start and see how that feels. Um, that'll give you enough time to get into a little bit more of a meditative space, especially if you go closer to the two minute mark. Um, and like I said, play around if the peace begins with me mantra doesn't quite stick, you know, play around and see what else feels good. Um, yeah, but I like that combination of the tapping, the breathing and the speaking because all of those um, are helpful practices that um, help calm the nervous system in different ways and they become all the more powerful when they're combined together. I hope that you are doing well and I hope you're taking care of yourself and those around you. If you have any questions, comments, please post them below and I'll be happy to get back to them as soon as possible. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.